Well, with Mark Fletcher seemingly set to be ready for the start of fall camp this summer and presumably for the season opener against Florida, does Miami still have a need to go out and get a running back in the transfer portal? Yes or no? You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricane, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Alex Dono. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and writer for allhurricanes.com. Thank you so much to the everydayers for making Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch. We're free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. We will be talking this episode about Robbie Washington's versatility and whether cornerback could end up being the permanent spot for a guy who came in as a talented wide receiver. Uh, we are going to be talking about the quarterback and running back rooms, as well as some important visitors. So one of them is already in town right now visiting Miami. Got a couple of running backs coming this weekend. Uh, and we're going to talk about all of this with the man, the myth, the legend, our boy Blue, Larry Bluestein, who's a South Florida staple, 560 WQAM, South Florida High School Sports. Blue, how are you, sir? I'm doing good. Thanks, Alex. Appreciate it. Uh, busy time of year, you know, with uh, spring break. Uh, uh, coming and going in a lot of places and then you got a lot of camps a lot of visits as you uh, alluded oh, to yeah. uh yeah it's uh and then uh you know get getting to watch some practices and before you know it uh, the high schools will have spring and the colleges will be out so uh yeah great time of year exciting time of year you know so uh, yesterday yeah. we found out early in the morning that henry parish is going to hit the transfer portal it, by the way there's a lot of smoke linking him going back to ole miss i mean Caden Proctor <laughs> left Alabama and went back to Alabama. So apparently Henry Parrish might do the same thing, go back to Ole Miss after leaving Ole Miss for Miami. Uh, and so my initial thought, Blue, when I found out Parrish was going to hit the portal, because I wasn't sure how long Mark Fletcher's recovery is going to be. Mark Fletcher's best running back on the team. I just didn't know when he's going to be recovered from that foot injury, if it's going to be in time for Florida. So my initial thought was, yeah. I think Miami needs to go out and get a running back from the portal. But then we find out yesterday afternoon, Mario Cristobal reveals that Mark Fletcher, he's on track with his recovery to be ready for fall camp. I would assume he's going to be ready for the opener against Florida. But then I also hear, it's one of the reports out there on Henry Parrish, that one of the reasons why Parrish decided to leave Miami was he caught wind, and Miami's pretty open and honest about this stuff, but he he caught wind that Miami is actually interested in going and grabbing a running back in the portal. I guess he didn't like that too much. So, Blue, my question to you would be, with what Miami has, even with Parrish leaving Miami, when you have Mark Fletcher, when you have A.J. Allen, Chris Johnson Jr., who's making good strides in practice, Trevante Citizen, who's healthy you know, now, making good strides in practice, Chris Wheatley Humphrey and Jordan Lyle uh, in as true freshmen uh, this coming season. There's there is a lot of inexperience there. How much of a need do you think running back is going to be in a few weeks when the portal reopens? Yeah, um, all I ask you to look back a couple of years when Miami was down to a uh, walk on running back, and the, you're never. Uh, going to run out of backs. I mean, you're always going to have a surplus of them. Just go check Ohio State. Go check Alabama. Go check Georgia. Go check some of the best teams in the country. And their depth chart, uh, somewhere around three, four, five, are guys who are four stars. So mm. it's always essential to have plenty of backs. I mean, you know, whether it be injury or whether it just be fatigue, um, you, you always need, and Miami's got the type of offense that's going to shuffle in three, four backs, and you don't know who's going to play. Like A.J. Allen, uh, we thought he'd be the guy, and then all of a sudden he doesn't play for a couple of games, and then he comes back and has a good – so in Miami's scheme, if they get five, six backs, who cares? And, and what are you afraid of if you're better than them? Uh, you know, you, you shouldn't have a – you know, shouldn't need to worry. So, I mean, you know – I like Henry and he's a good guy, but uh, you know, I mean, the whole thing is, is you, you got to be ready for competition, no matter where yeah. he ends up, whether it's uh, Ole Miss, as you alluded to, or anywhere. Um, yeah. I, I think Miami needs to go out and, and, and because that, that room can never get complacent. You always got to have somebody, you know, chasing somebody and working harder. So yeah, I totally agree with going out and getting another back or two. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm a fan of everybody in the room. Like, the, the only thing that would make me – I would understand if Miami went out and got somebody. And I would understand it because, you know, when you're talking – like, people forget how important that position is when it comes to pass protection, when it comes to experience leadership. And, you know, the, the only thing that gives me pause is the fact that, you know – and, and Fl Fletcher, I think, is that dude, okay? But he is, he is still – he's heading into his second year. He's going to be a true sure. sophomore next year. Uh, A.J. Allen is going to be, I think, a third-year sophomore. Chris Johnson, redshirt freshman. Trevante Citizen, I guess he's like a third-year redshirt freshman. I don't know what you would call and him. And he's never played. Point. And that's he's never, the whole Right, thing. he's never played. Yeah. Chris Wheatley Humphrey and Jordan Lyle have never played. So, you know, when, when you think about everything that goes into that position when it comes to – because usually the older a player is, the more consistent you are, no matter what position you play. That includes I running agree. back. The older yeah, you are, yeah. the more consistent you are. And the older you are at that position, you're probably more reliable in pass protection than a first or second year guy would be. Right. And you know as well as I do, and you've watched plenty of football, you could have a guy who's a red uh, or a true freshman and a, or even a redshirt freshman that comes in and all of a sudden this guy's carrying the ball nine, ten times for 150 yards. And all of a sudden you're saying, whoa, wait a minute. And I think Citizen is that type of guy. Yeah. Because if you look back in his high school career, this kid was phenomenal. I mean, you know, he, you know, from the waist to, to the middle of the knees, you're wasting your time because he's never going to go down on the first hit. And I think here's a kid that has an opportunity to be really, really special. Uh, even though he lacks the, you know, overall game experience, I just think you get a guy out there with the, with the line that Miami has built, you know, the depth that Miami has up front, all he needs is a hole. It doesn't take any experience to run through a hole. So, you know, it's, it's usually when your offensive line is uh, deficient where where you're calling on a back of experience and somebody who's, you know, gifted enough to, to kind of create. But I think in this situation, it really plays into the hands of uh, Miami with the great offensive line play expected and to have a Chris Johnson who, who yeah. only needs a little seam because I've watched him in big games against Chaminade. I watched him against St. Thomas. I, and here's a kid that can get outside quick, but now he's learning from what I understand to run tackle to tackle in college football. If you run tackle to tackle, you know, like, like, um, you know, some of those guys like uh, James cook, here's a perfect example. When he was in high school, they used him a lot at slot or tried to get him outside because of his speed. But in college, you get linebackers running in that four four nine range, four five range, who, you know, who could catch you. So you've got to have more than one trick, you know, and you know, and you got to be you be able to do a lot of things. And I think that's where Miami with Citizen. I think with the, I I still think AJ Allen, uh, you know, is 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 that. Mercedes that's parked in the garage and you ah. still got to you still got to get him out there. Yeah, you're right. Fletcher's the number one, but I think uh, with the addition of another running back or two, it's going to make that room really crowded and competitive. That's a fantastic breakdown. And I wanted to get in a little more detail on Fletcher because again, like I, I think he is, you know, if, if you, AJ Allen is the Mercedes Fletcher, Fletcher's like the Jeep Wrangler. Like, you know, he's yeah. going to be tough. He can, he can in the mud, he can plow through people, all that. Uh, yeah, I think he's Miami's best overall running back with citizen citizen being a wild card. Like if citizen can get back to where he was in high school, sure. he could have a similar kind of impact. But you know, Mark Fletcher is a guy you watched him, I'm sure, back to when he was a little kid. Oh, of course, yes. you watched him at his time in American grade. Heritage. Yeah. yeah. And, like, he he already – he made a massive impact as a true freshman last year, Blue. So, if, if he can put everything together in his second year, how much potential could a Mark Fletcher-led backfield have? Well, here's the thing, too. You, you, you When you get more backs and you become deeper, you don't have to rely on him to do everything, and you don't have to wear him down. Yeah. Because this is a guy who's going to hand out some punishment. He showed last year, you know, down near the goal line, if he gets that ball, you know, you better come to play and tackle him because if not, he'll drag you right into the end zone. And I think that his durability, you know, obviously took took a blow last year because they, they looked for him to do a little bit more than he should have as a, as a true freshman. But I think as a as a guy who's going to be a starting running back, I think if he gets 15 touches a game somewhere along the line, whether as a receiver, as a running back, I think that that's the guy that you're going to look to. And then then you start filling in the blanks. And and if Miami has those capable guys, as we just mentioned with Allen and, you know, potentially citizen or even one of the freshmen that, you know, that come in, I think that you're you know, you're you're building a tremendous 
uh, offensive backfield. And then certainly with the addition of a Cam Ward at quarterback, he adds that dimension where, you know, maybe, uh, you know, the quarterbacks in the past didn't, where if he doesn't, you know, see a receiver, he could, he could be the, the additional running back and maybe use his legs to pick up a first down. And uh, so it's a dynamic offense. And, but, uh, you know, I think if you're afraid uh, of competition and you shouldn't oh. be there. And that that's my point because Miami's not the, Miami's not the Miami of two years ago. So it is a whole different ball game. The, the, the direction Miami's going in Alex is a whole lot different than when Mario arrived. So I think that uh, you have to understand if they could land a marquee type of back who wants to come here and remember a guy comes in here, he's going to think, well, I could, you know, really play, you know, give a lot of playing time and he won't look at the depth chart other than everybody kind of knows Mark Fletcher, but still, you know, that Mark Fletcher went down last year, you know, that every running back on that, you know, on that staff or on that roster, uh, you know, you're one play away from stepping up. And, uh, and uh, that's what Miami wasn't ready for two years ago. And I think they're more than ready. And uh, yeah, if you could bring in somebody, let's do it. You're only trying to get better. You're not, uh, you're not trying to stir dissension. You're just trying to make the, the competition better. I love that. And we got so much to talk about here with Larry Bluestein. And I know that, um, so there, there's a certain early enrollee tight end who is, he's catching eyes in practice. He's turning heads every single day. One person who's not surprised by that is my guest, Larry Bluestein. I want to talk more about Elijah Lofton, who uh, I think it's going to be a new chapter at tight end at Miami compared to what we saw last year, which wasn't a whole lot. I think this year is going to be a different era. So my friends, we are only getting started you want to keep it locked right here to this brand new episode. We are live on Locked on Kane's YouTube. Guys, I am so excited to welcome Better Together to the Locked on Kane's family. Are you tired of the same old daily fantasy grind where you make a roster, you cross your fingers, and you hope for the best? Or, you know, you lose in that last leg of your pick em entry? Let me introduce to you Better Together, B-E-T-T-O-R, Together. It is the first cooperative daily fantasy platform where teamwork tr trumps talent, and you can play with your friends, not against them. This is really cool. You pick more or less on real-time player stats, strategize with your partner to boost your odds, and climb the leaderboard together. So grab a friend and join the social DFS movement. This really is revolutionary, guys. This creates a shared experience because, yeah, again, daily fantasy can be fun alone, but, guys, it is so much better together. No pun intended. Well, pun was very much intended. And, yeah, it gives experienced players uh, an opportunity to really flex your muscles, but it also gives inexperienced players an immersive way to learn about DFS by teaming up with your friends. Guys, you should download Better Together now from the App Store and sign up using promo code Locked On for a chance to win your share of over $1,000 in cash prizes. Remember the code, Locked On, all one word, because winning alone is fun, but it's better together. Guys, we are also proudly, proudly brought to you by our great friends at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, patience, what brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million, million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Thank you so much for making this live hump day episode of Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. Alex Dono alongside the man, the myth, the legend, our boy Blue, Larry Bluestein. So, you know, Blue... Uh, you know, you you put so much focus not only into covering high schools in Florida and in the southeast, but I know you've always got your eye on Bishop Gorman because that, that's yeah. a powerhouse program out there in Las Vegas. And, you know, Miami's had successful players, specifically a successful tight end in the past. 
from that program in Brevin Jordan. And now Miami's got the guy they call Mini Brevin. That, that, that's his nickname in Vegas and now in Miami. Elijah Lofton, number nine. Uh, it's funny, Blue. I, we were talking with Ja'Cory Harris on the show yesterday, and Ja'Cory was out there the first week of spring practice, and he didn't even know the name, but he's like, you got to talk to me about that n- tight end number nine. I couldn't believe that dude was a freshman. He's out there making plays. Uh, Elijah Lofton had the catch of practice yesterday. He's a one-handed grab on a ball that was thrown behind him, made a ridiculous catch. When I told you that Elijah Lofton's doing well out there, you were not the slightest bit surprised by that, Blue. No, but um, I call him, uh, you know, call him Reverend Jordan 2.0 because yeah. he's really the, a, a lot like him wearing the same number. Um, you know, a guy that was coming out of high school and before he did as a sophomore, this kid's played five different positions at the high school level in the state championship game against Liberty last year. Remember, he played quarterback. He played receiver. He even went into the, uh, the you know, a wildcat. He's played defensive end. He's played linebacker. Uh, he plays everywhere. And, and this is one of those guys that I thought when Miami uh, had him, got him signed, I thought that that was – you know, everyone was talking about all these different guys at Miami, you know, inked on this guy's great and this guy, but I thought he was somebody who was as close. He and Zaquan Patterson were as close to being ready to play at this next level as anybody that they had. And, and I think with Elijah, you have a person who, um, who gets it and he, he doesn't look at things like, Oh, I'm just a freshman and I'm going to, no, he thinks he should be, he, you know, you're giving me that Jersey. You're giving me that uniform. I'm ready to play. And I think he's going to, as you said, you know, especially with Elijah Arroyo, you know, still trying to get back, you know, on a full-time basis, he hasn't uh, been healthy, uh, you know, which I, I mean, and, w- and it's great to call these guys outstanding, like Elijah, I mean, like um, uh, Arroyo and all these other people, but if they're not on the field, they're just not, you know, and they're not getting to, getting it done. And I think that's where Elijah is taking advantage of the fact that Miami's been deficient at that position. You know, they, They've had some depth. They've had some glimpses, you know, I mean, uh, of some pretty good players. But, yeah, he's a he's the dude, and I knew he would be. And, you know, a lot of people were questioning me and, you know, and they, oh, there's no way he's just going to be able to make that. Yeah, he is. He played for one of the best high school teams in the country. Yeah. He was a catalyst on that team. Every college in the country wanted him. SC wanted him. Oklahoma, everybody in the nation wanted him. And Miami came away with him, and there's a reason why. Yeah, I think uh and and yeah, you you brought up Elijah Arroyo and, and another one, Blue. I'm I'm very high on Riley Williams heading into his yeah. second year. Yeah. And and yeah, I mean old, old man Cam McCormick is, is he still yeah. around as well? <laughs> and, and he's working yeah. his way back. He was he had some minor injuries the first week of spring ball. He's working his way back now in the second week. But when you think about, you know, guys, <laughs> guys like Riley Williams and Elijah Arroyo, if he can stay healthy along with Elijah Loft. And I'm also curious as to what we may see from Jackson Carver, if he can catch yeah, on yeah. a little bit more. Like, I'm I'm just hoping it. And Shannon Dawson said it to me the first week. He's like, I, I hope you guys don't have to keep asking me about when the tight ends are going to get more catches. Like, I'm, I'm hoping that comes this year soon. Yeah, well, here's the thing, too. You know, your last two offensive coordinators, their previous jobs, uh, their tight ends in their last year had a total of 176 catches. So you would you would think certainly with Lashley being at um, at SMU and his tight end really did a tremendous job, and and you know now at Houston the last year his his tight end had 83 catches or 84 catches. So. Yeah, it's very much in his game plan. But if you're going to throw to, you know, uh, to a Riley Williams or one of them and they start dropping the ball, he's they're going to be, uh, you know, right. out of the game plan real quick, especially because they have backs who can catch the ball out of the backfield, especially because now there's some receivers starting to, you know, step up. You, you already know what you have in the slot position. Uh, you're looking to, to make a splash on the outside. And, uh, and I think, you know, Jacoby George has an opportunity to be in all ACC player but at the same time he has a chance to be somebody who's not going to do very much and we, we've got to get the ultimate out of him because he's got yeah. the potential as we saw he just got to get out of the doghouse he's got to get on the good side all the time you know uh, of Kevin Beard and uh, and and the offense and uh but there's a lot to be said for what you said about tight end. I, I think Miami's room is really really good with a lot of potential you got to stay healthy and you got to play up to your ability. 
You know, Miami has a, a wide receiver who who's doing some cross training blue. Like I'm I'm out of practice yesterday and I see, you know, the, the offensive players were wearing white jerseys, the defensive players were wearing orange jerseys. I see a, a guy with a white jersey working out with the defensive backs. I'm like, wait, what's going on? It was uh, Robbie Washington who was he, he was working at cornerback yesterday. And you know, Mario Cristobal said, Hey, this is a, a good time to experiment, and this is a guy with a ton of athleticism and versatility. So I, I guess I'm just it's probably too soon to really make a prognosis, but I'm I'm wondering if defensive back might end up being the spot for Robbie. Uh you covered he and his his twin uh Bobby, you know, throughout their youth and playing high school ball. Do you, do you think Robbie Washington could end up being a, a great defensive back? Maybe maybe Sam Shields uh but making that transition earlier rather than later. Yeah, look at you uh, making that reference. And, and, you know, that was the one thing about Sam Shields where he was, you know, it took him into the NFL for eight years as a yeah. defensive back because of the fact that he had that athleticism. And I, I remember when Duke Johnson was coming up, a lot of people said, you know, he could be a four or five star, a star cornerback as well as a running back. And sometimes you have that athleticism. He does. He's been around the game a long time, you know, with his dad playing, his brother and him always competed when they were up in Tennessee and then they came down, you know, to, to uh, Killian then Palmetto for the last year. Um, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me because he's got instincts. The only thing he lacks is reps and experience. Right. And, you know, I'm sure if, if he's really or they're really serious about the move, I, I'm sure that you're going to see him spend a lot of time in the film room and go over coverages. And and because he's got the athletic ability, he's got instincts. He just needs to be in the right place at the right time. And all that does is take reps and experience. And, uh, and like Mario Cristobal said, if you're going to do something like that, Right now is the time to do it. Yeah, we got a lot more still to talk about here with Larry Bluestein. I, I do want to talk about some recruiting visits coming up, class of 2025, plus uh, a possible transfer portal target. I say possible because there, there's rumors out there that Miami might actually go after a player that burned them several years ago by decommitting. So we'll talk about that and so much more. When we come back, you know what you want to do, my friends? You want to keep it locked right here. We're only getting started on this brand new episode of Locked on Canes. <clears throat> and yeah, I'm only getting started with the awesome, awesome SUV lineup at Nissan. This week's March Madness bracket highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The Auburn Tigers can only be described as a pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch. They've really created a lane for themselves after claiming the top spot in the SEC as they knocked off the Florida Gators, which I love in the SEC Tournament Championship. They're set to make a run in the NCAA Tournament. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Thank you so much for making this episode of Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all, the sh with all that shouting? Make sure you switch to Locked on Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. I do scream sometimes, I'll admit. Locked on Sports today brings can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We got the man, Larry Bluestein, our boy Blue, with us. So, you know, Blue, I, I've seen uh, this, this is very polarizing among Canes fans as this is being talked about now. First of all, because Miami, had, they've got a lot of defensive linemen, and they, they just added um, uh, Elijah Alston. There's a lot of good Elijahs on the team. Elijah Alston yeah. from Marshall. <laughs> Uh, has been doing really well at edge, but I, I've, I've seen some rumblings that Miami might uh, bring in Romello Height, who people will remember, you know, four or five years ago, you know, dramatically flipped from Miami to Auburn. I know he pissed a lot of people off down here, started his career at Auburn, played at USC, which is a program you cover very closely. I mean, listen, I. Uh, yeah, obviously, whatever bridge he burned was not with the current coaching staff. It was, you know, with with the previous coaching staff. But do you think R Romello Height, would that be a good option for Miami if they decide to go down that path? 
Yeah, well, definitely. You know, here's a guy with experience now, somebody that can come in and and give you a lot, you know, not just, you know, a, a, as a player on the field, but also in the locker room where it's important, you know, to have guys with experience. He's been been around, been a, at a high level before. Uh, yeah, what do you have to lose? You really don't, don't have anything to lose. If he works out, then it's it's a added uh, it's an added plus. If he doesn't, hey, so be it. You know, you but you've got to explore everything. Got to turn over all the rocks, especially when you're trying to build a program because you don't know who's going to be that gem. And remember this, Alex, you only have these kids really for a year and then you have to re-recruit all of them. So, uh, you know, that's why I said, if you have an opportunity to get anybody, you you do it because, you know, uh, as soon as this season is winding down in uh, December next year, uh, you're going to have to start getting in the room and trying to go over your current roster and see which kids you could hold on to. And um, I think it's important to get as many bodies in there as possible. Obviously, Miami, I think either seven or eight scholarships over right now. Yes. Um, you know, obviously, Paris Lee leaves, that'll be one. But I think just after spring, you're going to see – being the spring game on the 13th, uh, I think that 14th, you're going to see a lot of kids shake and loose because the 15th, the portal opens back up. So <laughs> that's why 100% or 90% of everybody in the college football is playing their spring game on the 13th of April this year, only because of, you know, there's a lot of schools that are over scholarship limits and they're going to try to shake a bunch loose to pick up some out of the portal. And uh, yeah. Uh, so to answer your question direct way. Yeah. I think it would be advantageous to the program. They are always looking for guys who, who have that experience. You know, it, someone who's actually visiting Miami now started his visit on Wednesday is four star tight end. Uh, this, we're talking class of 2025. Now four star tight end Brock shot out of Leo, Indiana. I think most of the the trends have him leaning towards Ohio State right now, yeah. but obviously there's plenty of time for Miami to get into the mix here. And you, we were just talking about the current crop of tight ends. Uh, have you had a chance to watch Mr. Shot? And what do you think? Yeah, difference maker. He, you know, I'll tell you what, he reminds me of a guy who would go to Iowa because, you know, Iowa's success at the tight end position, but he's an athletic guy. He blocks extremely well. Uh, he does everything. He's a good-sized kid, gets up field real well. Uh, you pair him on a safety or a linebacker, and you're writing your death sentence. So, uh, you know, he, he's a receiving tight end. He's a blocking tight end, probably more as a receiver, but uh, somebody who would fit in the scheme, like I said, of an Iowa who produces, like, two first round uh, tight ends every year to the NFL. So yeah, if Miami could land somebody like that. And, and, you know, you can't say nowadays, Oh, well, they may not have a shot. Well, look who, look who they turned from Ohio state already. Yeah. Uh, one of the best defensive tackles in the country and, 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 and running backs the last and two run, years. Also. Exactly. So yeah, yeah they, I think Miami's got a legitimate shot. I think the, the thing is, everybody's starting to like this program because they're progressive and everything that Mario Cristobal said that he was going to do, he's doing. He's uh, interchanged uh, coaches when he had to, coordinators when he had to. There's not a thing that he didn't come in saying it wasn't you know, that he was going to do that he hasn't done. And, uh, you know, he never promised a three year plan. He never promised any, you know, times didn't promise national titles, but he did promise that he would revamp the roster and give Miami the best chance to win. And I think by adding somebody, you know, of that caliber uh, certainly would fit along the lines of what he's doing. Yeah, there's a couple of uh, important running back targets that are going to be visiting this weekend reported by 24 seven sports. Uh, and, you know, M Miami's recruiting a lot of running backs in this cycle. You know, we've, we've talked about guys like Byron Lewis and, and sure. Alvin Henderson. There's, there's a couple of other guys who are going to be here though. Blue four star. Uh, I think he recently got upgraded, which is good for him. Gerard Pringle, who's now a four star out of Armwood uh, high in Sefner, Florida and three star running back Jasper Parker, out of Marrero, Louisiana. You know, Miami's got those Cajun coordinators. We love to recruit Louisiana now. Uh, anything you can tell us? And, you know, Pringle, Pringle, I've seen his tape. A lot of fun to watch. I don't know as much about uh, Parker, but anything you could tell us about this duo that's going to be visiting this weekend? Well, let's start with Parker. And here's a guy who who's a, a powerful kid. He's quick. Uh, you know, he's he plays a really challenging schedule. Comes out of the same um, same area as um, as Marshall Falk. Uh, 
And, you know, I mean, obviously that's a, a, a huge area for talent. This is a guy that has a, you know, I don't know about three star because, you know, I don't buy into the stars too much. Right. I, buy, I buy more into the product of uh, productivity and I've watched them, you know, via tape, obviously I don't, you know, when you watch only a tape and I do that very little that I only watch watch on tape because I like to see the kids firsthand and see them up close because then you got a chance to watch your character and where, you know, what type of player they are on and off the field, but just watching his tape. I mean, this is a, this is a get, this is somebody that's really, really special. Uh, Pringles. I got the cheat code because I've watched him since he was in ninth grade. Actually, when he was in eighth grade playing ninth grade and they had him at receiver at Armwood for a seven on seven over at USF. Uh, he was pointed out to me a long time, you know, uh, when he was in eighth grade by the coaching staff over there. Uh, and they told me, Hey, keep your eye on him. I watched him last year when we saw him at, uh, at the university of Florida camp. Um, they, yeah, he's got the goods, you know, and he, he, he you know, they've had some really good talent that's come out of that program over the years. Uh, this is a team that um, certainly uh, gives their kids an opportunity to go to major schools. And, uh, yeah, Pringle's definitely a player. I mean, there's no doubt about it. One of the top backs in, you know, in the class. And, um, you know, he'll get a chance this year. They play in a, you know, in a classification that's going to test them again, like last year with, you know, with the competition that they play with Tampa Bay Tech and and programs like that. So, yeah, both of them are really, really good players. Uh, I know Pringle a lot better because I've seen him on and off the field. Well, this is great insight, as always, from Larry Bluestein. And I've said it before. I'll say it again. Uh, his radio show on WQAM 560 in Miami, it's the most informative show in the country uh, when it comes to keeping up to date college sports high school sports, of course, heavy focus on football, uh, but he branches out quite a bit. Blue, when, when's the next show on WQAM? What, what can people expect? Yeah, we'll be on next Tuesday, but, you know, last night we had a really good show. It was our uh, kickoff to the uh, uh, third annual Broward County National Football Showcase, which will be the 22nd through the 24th of August. Um, and uh, we had a special show at Dave and Buster's in Hollywood last night and we unveiled the teams. And I'll tell you what, if you love high level football, you have Bishop Gorman coming to play against St. Thomas. You have St. John Bosco playing against Shaman Madonna. You have Milton and Mr. Nickel come in again for the second straight year to My play guy. American Heritage. And another quarterback in Dia Bell, who uh, is one of the tops for the 2026 class. Uh, you have Hoover of Alabama. If you were an old Rush Probst fan, uh, you remember back in the day, they were just amazing. They're coming to play Western, uh, you know, who uh, – Every year is in the mix. Um, Peachtree Ridge, uh, which uh, um, uh, Ironhead Hayward's son uh, played there and been in the NFL forever at Peachtree Ridge in Atlanta area. They're coming down to play Coconut Creek Monarch. Uh, you, you also have Miami Northwestern and Teddy Bridgewater is going to be playing against Coconut Creek, a little Dade uh -huh. versus Broward. Uh, you have Lake Mary with one of the top uh, young quarterbacks and uh, you know, and, and Noah Grubbs, they're coming down to play against Cardinal Gibbons. Uh, it's going to be an exciting time. Some great games. I know that a lot of people, and especially in the South Florida area, are going to make it, make it a priority to get to a couple of those games. And the best thing is, is you can probably see all seven games because they're kind of spread out through uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, great stuff as always. You guys want to make sure you follow Blue at Larry Bluestein on X. You can follow us at Locked on Canes. If you follow our show at Locked on Canes, we will follow you back. Uh, Blue, thank you so much for the time. As always, enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate you guys. Always. We'll talk to everybody again next time on another episode of Locked on Canes. We are part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day.